had it not been for me being sick, I would not have started eating fully raw. I was very blessed to have run into John Rose in a grocery store one day. Uh, many of you may know this story already, but I'll tell you. I had just gotten out of the hospital um, as a type 2 hyperglycemic diabetic. I had really high blood sugar. And for some reason, they were still giving me insulin at the time. And I remember I'd just gotten out of the hospital. I had an IV patch in my arm. I was 79 pounds at the time, not from not eating, but from just not having felt really good. And I remember I was snitching sugar-free granola out of the bin at Whole Foods. <laughs> I mean, I was going to pay for it. I was. It just, you know, it was right there. It was good. And uh, John Rose walks behind me and he taps me on the shoulder and in his very strong voice was, excuse me, are you a raw foodie? <laughs> and I just looked at him and me being a younger girl, I thought he was just hitting on me in a grocery store. And I was by myself and I just, you know, said no. But I mean, clearly he knew that I was sick because I still had my patch on and I didn't look good. And um, he just started telling me that he's been juicing and eating raw food and for the longest time. And I thought it was pretty funny because I'd never heard of such a thing. I grew up, my mother's from Lebanon, my father's from Ecuador, and I grew up eating both their foods. So basically it was like Lebanese food, chicken, beans, and rice, and olive oil was a main course all on its own. <laughs> and um, I remember after I had met him that day, I went home, I got really sick, and I went back into the hospital. And when I had gotten back out is when I began my whole journey in consuming this lifestyle. And most people don't, ever have that kind of experience. They fall into it in a different way. They don't have somebody just randomly tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, eat fruits and vegetables, change your life. Or maybe you do. Maybe you're here because somebody encouraged you to change your life in a more positive way. Um, the funny thing is, is that in Texas 13 years ago, you can only imagine, I, I know many of you may feel a little bit secluded, or maybe you don't have the right support or the right community system, the right friends, family members support you through this, but for me in Texas 13 years ago with my very ethnic family, telling people that you were recycling was just starting to get popular, <laughs> right? You know, the green, the green arrow sign that went like, that was just starting to get popular. Telling somebody that you were going vegetarian in Texas was, eh, people knew what it was, but they didn't know why you were doing it. They just thought that, you know, it was more of an environmental thing. Um, and then telling somebody that you were vegan was, oh no, she, she, she crazy, someone need to call her mama, you know? <laughs> telling somebody that you were raw vegan was, send her to the institution, she has lost her mind, she's going to die. Um, the funny thing is, is that my intro to this lifestyle with John Rose, I remember I called him after being out of the hospital, and I said, you know, I've never tried anything alternative before in my entire life. This is so scary to me. The only thing I think I'd ever done alternative at that time is maybe a massage, <laughs> right? I grew up in a very, very culturally stern household to the point of where it's like church every Sunday, no sex before marriage, eat all the food that's on your plate or it's considered disrespectful. And I think maybe my entire childhood growing up I maybe had fruit like two or three times and barely any salad, other than like a fatouche salad. And I was not even breastfed. So you can imagine for me this was very much going out of my comfort zone. And um, John Rose was very nice about it and he said, you know, I'm gonna, I'll just meet you at the store one day, I'm just gonna tell you all why your blood sugar's messed up and we'll just, we'll fix it from there. I walked into meeting with him that day and he convinced me to mono meal for two weeks straight two weeks straight, and I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm going to die, right? <laughs> Doctors are telling me that I can't eat sugar-free this, I can't eat sugar-free that, it has to come in a package. And I think at that time, my health was declining because I stopped eating my parents' food and I started eating only things that came out of a package. And I noticed a significant difference in my headaches and my energy dropping and my weight dropping I remember one night I sat down with a whole tub of Bluebell ice cream and ate the whole thing just because I was so ashamed of being so skinny and I just wanted to look like a normal human. But then that made my blood sugar go high, I spent the rest of the night vomiting and then it became this cyclical pattern of having to go and get more insulin and it was just a terrible, terrible mess. So when John Rose said, I want you to pick your favorite fruit and you're going to eat it for two weeks straight, 
my mind was just like, what? How is this even going to work? How am I going to eat fruit that has sugar and as a type two, get through that? And um, considering I felt like I had already hit my lowest point at 18, it's not exactly the easiest time in your life to hit rock bottom when you're 18 because then you can't exactly imagine how the rest of your life will look. And then you think, well, I'm 18 and I have no purpose, I have no meaning, I don't want to be here. And um, he, I remember him saying, just pick your favorite fruit. And I remember saying, I don't have a favorite fruit, why do you keep asking me that? <laughs> And so I remember out of the corner of my eyes, I saw like peaches and I said, okay, fine, I'll do peaches. And I walked out of that Whole Foods with 80 pounds of peaches that day. And I was 87 pounds. And I just remember the girl at the checkout counter, she's like, are you starting a restaurant? 